Lynn from the uh, Oncological Society. Thank you very much for the possibility to make that presentation on the export of medical service and the possibilities for oncological dispensaries. Development of medical tourism in the Russian Federation is due to economic potential and state support. Now, the national project on healthcare is realized and it determines the imp uh, increase of export services uh, to 1 billion, you say, in 2024. Uh, uh, how can we assess that potential? We can uh, get data from open sources. Their statistical reliability is doubtful. On any, in any case, they give a preliminary picture. According to the data available in open sources, for 2017, about 120 patients came to Russia with medical purposes, but in 2018, that was 300,000 in monetary terms. According to Ranhe's group, it was assessed as about 10 and 15 billion rubles in 2016. What can be said? Most of those who, uh, patients who come are citizens of uh, uh, nearby uh, foreign countries, and CS countries. There is an interest among the residents of China, South Korea. These patients mainly come to Siberian federal region due to geographic fact. At the same time, there is an interest among the citizens of Japan, Vietnam, and Israel, and uh, uh, Germany, Finland, Denmark, and Sweden. What uh, trends are popular among the foreign patients? First, traumatology and also Pedics, ophthalmology, reproductive medicine, procedures, eco, uh, um, most popular among the citizens of Israel, stomatology, urea, cardio surgery, as to uh, 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 medical tourism, attractiveness, uh, ranks first. It is based not only on the low exchange rate of ruble and foreign patients save up to 80% getting medical services in Russia, but the quickness due to the quickness and quality of the service. These are the main criteria uh, when the patient chooses the medical service in the country. Unfortunately, realization of the potential uh, is uh, uh, ranks 59 for changing the situation. A federal project was launched for the development of expert of medical services. What were the objectives of the federal project creation and development of the mechanism and conditions ensuring the growth of the expert of medical technologies, creation of additional sources of financing among the tasks, development and simulation of the monitoring system of statistical data, there is no official statistics development and implementation of the program of information measures, increasing the awareness of foreign citizens about uh, medical services in Russia, and development of the strategy and methodology for medical organizations for solving these tasks. Coordinating center was set up on implementation of the project, and I would like to thank the employees of Coordinating Center for the assistance to prepare the presentation. There is a special to an international cooperation, Ksenia Krukova. If you have questions, she will comment on them. The main indicators of the federal project is increasing number of uh, treated foreign patients by 2024 uh, to 1.2 million persons. What is the basis of such indicators? According to the forecast, the market of medical services in the next 10 years will increase by 25% annually. As to the forecast of the World Association of Healthcare in several years, medical tourists Tourism will be one of the main trends in global economy, so we have the ambitious purposes that can be attained. As to the uh, activities of the federal project today, uh, 71 regional passports have been approved on export of medical services. 14 regions for different reasons do not take part in the federal project, but I hope that soon their number will decrease. And as to oncology, I'd like to know that now 
in the, some regional programs. Uh, dispensaries participate in the pilot project, uh, Volgograd region, for instance. So what are the main barriers for the development of export of medical services? Unfortunately, low awareness of foreign citizens or the possibility of getting medical services in Russia. Sometimes uh, there is a, a negative uh, image of the operation of our medical centers. Probably we have to conduct an advertising campaign in the countries which uh, affect our interests and to create a unified internet resource in the English language that will aggregate all the currently available medical services for the foreign patients and development of the system of advancement of the services. Then communication barriers, of course, a low, a English, a low language competencies of the medical specialists. Uh, not uh, all uh, medical institutions have uh, an English versions of the site as to the interpreter there are quite few, a uh, lack of available infrastructure, not only accommodation and traveling, it's difficulties uh, with getting visa for foreign patient, low uh, level of uh, uh, near medical services, no interaction with Western insurance companies, gaps in the state regulation of that sector. For some patients, there is uh, no uh, system of uh, professional responsibility of medical organization that is a negative factor and the last issue system of certification an important factor for decision making about choosing a certain medical organization is uh, the availability of international certificates and uh, quality marks uh, with clear ratings uh, of the organizations if we pass on to quality management system. All the certification systems are based on ISO standards. ISO standard uh, 2001 was adapted and translated into Russian and approved by the order. There are many materials in open access concerning the standard. I won't detailize on it, but the main principle, a plan, a do, a check and act, uh, adequate uh, objectives, monitoring of implementation of the processes, and a correction of the results. So these are the main provisions. What are the advantages of the use of the quality management system? A clear building of the process of organization, distribution of internal resources and responsibility, creation and in, uh, increasing satisfaction of the patients and increasing the image of organization that demonstrates the adherence to international standards and higher quality requirements. The decision on participate in quality management system is a strategic decision of the manager. He should be a leader showing his commitment uh, to that system. Mainly all the certifications are based on basic approaches and ISO standards. As to medical tourism, there are many systems, uh, but I will discuss several of them. The largest is, is uh, IQNet, which brings together about uh, 37 countries having the most developed uh, system of certification. And then the certification system, TEMAS, from 2010, is an active organization which uh, uh, the certification system is uh, based on the results of the study among the patients who choose uh, international medical organizations. They were asked what requirements they have, what qualities they need so that they choose the uh, medical organization. As for oncology, as the most complicated system that needs a multidisciplinary approach, interaction with different structures. I'd like to show the certification experience of the German Oncological Society, that is an NGOs bring about 8,000 experts, and the main purpose is to improve the quality of oncological aid. The experience of that organization is most ad adapted for oncological dispensaries, and I will ask my colleague Elen Grishammer to detailize on the process of certification in the German Oncological Society.
Okay. Thank you very much for the invitation to present the um, Cancer Center Certification Program initiated by the German Cancer Society today. Um, like it was already pointed out, our main goal is um, to ensure high quality of care for oncological patients. And with this, we are um, making quality of care transparent and comparable um, between hospitals, regions, and between um, countries. So today I would like to give you a short overview about our certification program, where we started, um, how the certified centers are defined, which criteria must be met, and um, how the audit um, is organized, and ultimately how the certification um, improves the quality of care for oncological patients. So the starting point um, for the certification program was a um, study conducted by the European Union, which showed um, that there were big differences in the quality of care amongst the different member states. Um, especially in Germany, it showed a lack for um, access to highly specialized care and that the um, medical guidelines were not really well implemented. So the medical societies in Germany um, saw that there was an urgent need to improve the quality of care and they initiated um, the first certification program for breast cancer in 2003. So it was an initiative by the medical societies and by the individual hospitals, which then ultimately transformed into um, a national program, into the National Cancer Plan for Germany and where it's now stated that the cancer care should be provided in certified centers in Germany. So um, how are certified cancer centers actually defined? They are a network of qualified and jointly certified interdisciplinary institutions that, if possible, represent the entire chain of healthcare for those affected. So let's um, have a more detailed look into this definition. Interdisciplinary institution. Here's an example for the prostate cancer center. So you can see all those listed um, partners are obligatory members of a certified centers. So it is a cooperation, not only between medical specialties, so interdisciplinary, but also between different professional groups, and if needed, even between different hospitals. The certified network should represent the entire chain of healthcare for the patient. So the patient is in the center of the network. So from early detection to diagnosis, therapy, follow-up, and if necessary, palliation, all these services should be provided within the certified network. So there are um, joint tumor boards, unified standards and processes, defined guidelines, and also a joint data management. Like I said, the network can be either, um, all partners can be localized in one hospital, or it's also possible to have them in more than one hospital. The certificate, which will be granted once the certification was successful, serves as a decision aid um, for patients, and it guarantees that this hospital, this network, um, has high quality of oncological care. So this is sort of a guiding tool for patients when they're looking for um, high quality in oncological care. So how are our certified networks build up? There are organ cancer centers. That is a cancer center that is specialized in one tumor entity. It's the most common tumor entities, colorectal, breast, lung, gynecological, skin, and prostate. And then we have oncology centers, which um, extends to several organs and is particularly for not so common cancers. We have, as of... Um, end of December last year, 968 certified organ cancer centers and 130 oncology centers with over 290 modules being certified. Each year, 240,000 patients with a primary diagnosis are treated in our certified centers. And um, the centers are located now um, in um, six different countries, including one already in Russia, a colorectal cancer center. 
As such, our certification program is actually the biggest and best implemented certification program in Europe. Um, if you want to have a um, closer look on our website, OncoMap, you can um, see exactly where our certified centers are located. You can filter them by tumor entity and by country. Which criteria must be met for certification? There is a catalog of requirement, and there is a data sheet with quality indicators which needs to be filled out and submitted annually. The catalog of requirement has for all tumor entities the same table of content. And here is an example for um, the network partner radiology. It talks about the structure and personnel qualification that is necessary, the technical equipment, the processes that needs to be implemented, and also on education and training. The data sheet, um, here the centers have to present annually um, their results. So there are different um, indicator types for each tumor entity. So it's around about 25 um, per tumor entity. And there are three groups of indicators. One is about the presentation of the certified network. So this talks about the interdisciplinary cooperation, for example, the presentation rate in tumor boards. Then there is um, a set of indicators on the uh, main treatment's expertise. So it talks about the results of operation, the complication rate, etc. And there is one um, set of indicators, they're called quality indicators, they derive from the evidence-based um, guidelines. The indicator results, they are presented annually in benchmarking report. There are an, um, anonymized annual reports per cancer type. They can be downloaded from our website. And each center is also receiving an individual annual report where they can see how they are performing in comparison with the other centers. So this is an example of um, what the benchmarking report looks like. Each indicator is presented on um, one page. This is the annual report for Prostate Cancer Center 2018. It contains the results of 125 certified prostate cancer centers and um, aggregated data from around 100,000 patients with a first diagnosis. It contains the results of 21 indicators, and it shows how the implementer developed over the course of time. It is very important that the data that is presented in the benchmarking report is validated. So the centers submit their documents. Then it's validated through a software that we have. It's called Oncobox. And then there's also an on-site peer review. And only then the data is presented in the benchmarking report. Because it's very important that only collecting the data without checking the structures and processes on site, um, it will not generate valid results. So that's why there's every year there um, is an on site audit. How is this audit organized? So it's organized on the basis of an audit plan. The auditors are oncological specialists with a specific training in how to conduct audits. Um, the duration on site and also the number of auditors depend on the size of the hospital of the network. And the task of the auditors are before the audit, they have to um, check for plausibility and the complete completeness of the data. During the audit, they have to verify the provided information of the centers. And they um, do this with the help of randomly chosen patient files. And um, one of the most important parts is they have to um, discuss together with the center the measures for possible quality improvement. And at the end, every center is receiving an audit report with a result if they are awarded the certificate or if not. So the, now um, the, the most important part actually is like how does the certification improve the quality of care for oncological patients. First, by setting up networks where the healthcare providers treat the patients with verified high quality medical expertise in an interdisciplinary manner. So everybody has to work together and everybody is responsible for keeping up the certificate. Second, by implementing the evidence-based medical guidelines and thus ensuring the broad application. And third, the quality of care in the individual center is recorded via the data sheet. It's analyzed through the annual report. And if necessary, um, 
or it's discussed in the on-site audit, and if necessary, improved by implying suitable measures. And as such, we have established a plan to check X cycle for continuous quality improvement within a certified cancer network. There are also several studies that show that um, our approach is really working. We can show with scientific um, studies that the um, overall survival is improving and that the hospital lethality and follow-up resection rate is lower for patients who are treated in certified networks. Here's an example for colorectal cancer. It was an analysis from the biggest health insurance provider in Germany, over 6,000 patients with a surgically treated colon carcinoma, and it showed that the one to five year survival rate were higher in certified centers, the 30 day mortality was lower, and so was the follow up resection rate. Below you find um, the, um, the source where you can uh, read up if you're interested. The same um, was shown by a study for breast cancer. So it shows here was a study from the cancer registries that the treatment of breast cancer at a certified breast cancer center improves the prognosis for the patient. And the third example that I brought today is um, for lung cancer. It was an analysis from the DRG, the Diagnose Related Group Statistics of all hospitals in Germany with over 11,000 anatomic resections with patients with lung cancer in 2015. And it showed that the hospital lethality was significant less in the certified centers. So thank you very much. Um, for your attention, and if you have any questions, I'm available. Yeah, thank, thank.